open opening prayer and statements of acknowledgement. Almighty God, we pray for your blessing upon this council. Help and prosper its work for the advancement and benefit of its people, so that peace and happiness, unity and justice may be established among us all. Amen. Manningham Council acknowledges the Wawandjeri Woiwurrung people as the traditional owners of lands and waterways now known as Manningham. Council pays respects to Elders past, present and emerging and values the ongoing contribution to enrich and appreciate the cultural heritage of Manningham. Council acknowledges and respects Australia's First Peoples as traditional owners of lands and waterways across country and encourages reconciliation between all. Manningham Council also values the contribution made to Manningham over the years by people of diverse backgrounds and cultures. So welcome everybody. I welcome our members of the public who have joined us in person in the gallery and also those who have joined us online. Before we do begin tonight's council meeting, I would like to apologise to the members of the public who came to the council yesterday expecting to attend the council meeting due to the incorrect day published in Manningham Matters. I would like to advise that tonight's meeting is being audio and video recorded. All care will be taken to maintain your privacy. However, as a visitor in the public gallery, your presence may be recorded. By remaining in the gallery, it is assumed your consent is given in the event that your voice and or image is broadcast by council. Council meetings are conducted in accordance with our governance rules. I will introduce each item of business as listed on the agenda, calling it by number and by reading the title. I will then call for a mover and a seconder of a motion on an item before opening any debate. Only councillors are able to join the debate on an item. Councillors may adopt the officer's recommendation in the report or propose amendments and supplementary motions. I would like to draw your attention to item seven on tonight's agenda, public question time, which provides people with an opportunity to ask questions of the council. Council's allocated 30 minutes for question time at tonight's meeting and the process for public question time is set out in our governance rules. Questions must be received prior to the start of the meeting to be asked. Where we receive advance notice of a question in accordance with our governance rules by 5 p.m. yesterday, we will provide a verbal response to the question at our meeting. Questions we receive today up to 7 p.m. may be taken on notice if we don't have the information on hand to provide a meaningful response. If this happens, you'll be provided with a written response to your question within 10 working days from today. I, I will deal with a maximum of two questions per person and two questions on any one issue. You'll be asked to come forward to the lectern to ask your question, where you will have the opportunity to provide a two minute introductory statement before asking your question. If you have more than two questions, please submit these additional questions in writing to council through the normal channels. To ensure the efficient conduct of our meeting and maximum participation during question time, all questions and answers shall be as brief as possible and no discussion is permitted on any question. Councillors and the gallery are reminded that question time is to be conducted in a respectful manner and any disorderly conduct will be managed in accordance with our governance rules. <laughs> Item number two, apologies and requests for leave of absence. There are no apologies. Councillors, are there any requests for leave of absence? None noted. Item number three, prior notification of conflict of interest. So no, no prior notifications of conflict of interest have been received. Would anyone like to give notice of a conflict of interest? None noted. Item number four, confirmation of minutes. Do I have a mover? Councillor Laura Main. I move that the minutes of the council meeting held on the 28th of March, 2023 be confirmed. Thank you. Do I have a seconder? Councillor Andrew Conlon, thank you. Uh, I'll put that to a vote. All those in favour? Thank you. And that's carried unanimously. 
Item number five, presentations. There are no presentations. Item number six, petitions. 6.1, installation of rubber guards or bollards at Tunstall Square. Do I have a mover? Councillor Lightbody? I'd like to move that the petition with 153 signatories, of which 114 are Manningham residents, requesting council install rubber traffic guards or bollards in the car park facing the shops on the west side of Tunstall Square Shopping Centre be received and referred through to the appropriate offices for consideration. Thank you. Do I have a seconder? Councillor Michelle Kleinert. Councillor Lightbody, would you like to speak to the motion? Yes. Thank you, Mayor. I'd like to thank the petitioners um, for submitting this petition. Um, it's a big issue that we've seen at a number of shopping centres. Um, increasing, increasingly, this is the sort of feedback that we've been getting from residents. Um, and I've also seen the images that were attached with the petitioner, from the petitioners um, prior to this meeting, and I'm happy to pass this petition on to the, our officers for recommendation. Thank you. Councillor Kleinert? I'll put that to a vote. All those in favour? And that's carried unanimously. Thank you. Item 6.2, request to continue Meals on Wheels delivery service. Do I have a mover? Councillor Chen? I move that the petition with 323 signatories of which 215 were Manningham residents requesting council to continue to provide the Meals on Wheels deliver, delivery service to the Meals on Wheels recipients without reducing the number of services per week in order to facilitate the prevention of isolation and loneliness as well as encourage good nutrition for the elderly be received and refer through the appropriate officer for consideration. Thank you, Councillor Chen. Do I have a seconder? Councillor Carly Lang. Councillor Chen, would you like to speak to the motion? Uh, just basically, thank, thanks for the uh, petition and uh, that will certainly bring into councils for consideration and a response. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Chen. Councillor Lang? Thank you. I'll put that to a vote. All those in favour? That's carried unanimously. Thank you. I'll now move to item 6.3, support for the in-home aged care program funded by the Commonwealth Government. Um, Madam Mayor, if I can just advise that this um, petition is non-compliant and not in accordance with our governance rule, sub rule 58.1D. Considering the nature of the petition, I would like to make an exception and have the petition tabled nonetheless. Thank you, CEO. Uh, do I have a mover for this petition? Yes, I'm happy to move it. Thank you, Councillor Conlon. I'd like to move that the petition with approximately 97 signatories supporting the continuation of the current in-home aged care program funded by the Commonwealth Government be received and referred through to the appropriate officer for consideration. Do I have a seconder? Councillor Michelle Kleinert. Councillor Conlon, would you like to speak to the motion? No, other, other than to thank the petitioners for going to the effort of putting this to us at a, at a very timely time. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Kleinert. I'll put that to a vote. All those in favour? Carried unanimously. Thank you. So item number seven, public question time. We have received a number of questions for tonight's council meeting. Thank you, it's good to get questions. Anyone submitting a question to council will have the opportunity to read out their question or can choose to have their question read out by our CEO. Our first questions are from Helen Jersevich, OAM. I can't see Helen is in the gallery this evening, so I will ask our CEO to read out questions on behalf of Mrs Jersevich. Thank you, Mayor. And just to give it some context, these questions are related to Council's in principle decision um, as it relates to aged care reforms and service delivery back on the 28th of February 2023. Question one is, as the Council decision is not final, would Manningham Council consider joining Darabin, Marybeck and Yarra City in applying for funds to continue the services? If not, 
uh, would council delay their final decision at the end of April to hear the community's replies at the end of June? And question two, are you contacting every client who is in receipt of the service as stated above, and how will you contact them, especially if 23% of the staff are laid off? Thank you, Andrew. I'll ask Lee Robson, Director of Connected Communities, to respond to both questions. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor, and thank you, Helen, for your questions. Uh, in response to the first question, I'd just say that we're aware of the three councils mentioned in the question and their approach to seeking funding. We're also aware of the nearly 50 Victorian councils who have already made their decision to not be part of the new Commonwealth in-home aged care service. The aged care reform agenda has been part of a bipartisan approach by the Commonwealth for nearly 10 years now. The national agenda is to bring aged care into a common system of operations across the country. There have been many years of negotiations and discussion with the Commonwealth about funding. Over this time, we've not observed any likelihood of a substantive change in direction as a result of Victorian local government advocacy. In regards to the second question about how Council will be informing its clients of the Commonwealth Home Support Program changes and the move to the new in-home aged care system. All clients of the service have received a letter outlining the proposed changes and have been provided with a dedicated contact phone number for further information. More than 10 group sessions have been visited personally uh, and there have been two in-person question and answer sessions available for interested members of the community. Should council no longer to de decide, sorry, should council decide to no longer be a service provider of CHSP services in future, all clients would receive advice in writing, plus the option to attend further question and answer sessions. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you, Lee. Our next two questions are from Gary Sagenek. Gary, would you like to come to the lectern? So, Gary, you have two minutes to make an introductory statement before asking your questions. Um, thank you. Um, before the December 6 meeting held, that was held last year, I attended three pre-meetings about this meeting, the last of which was held on December the 5th, which was conducted with councillors Deidre Demonte, Stephen Main, and Lee Robson. Why would there be so many pre-meetings prior to the September, December 6 meeting if that meeting meant nothing and had no conclusion? The stage one meeting was meant to set the parameters going forward for the design or refit as it turned out. That was the objective. At the conclusion of the first stage consultation process, the result of the overwhelming majority and going, to, that going into stage two was as follows. And I give this as a statement of fact. One, to leave the parameters of the road and footpath as is. Two, only enhance the existing open spaces and not to increase the open spaces. Three, to install safety measures. Four, to resurface the footpath. We, the underside, stand by this statement as is a matter of fact. And these are the signatures of the people who are making this statement. Okay, these are, that's from the traders. These are the people that are relying on me to represent them and I'll never let them down. We've now held four meetings with the same result. We propose going forward two two-hour meetings with a third being optional. And the result on the December 6 meeting to stand in the interests of the facts and the majority then you'll achieve a true consensus when the stakeholders and true majority are finally noticed. Thank you. Uh, questions? One, for the fifth time I'm requesting the council make available the minutes for the phase one consultation design meeting with the traders and the Mosaic Labs facil facilitators held on the 6th of December, 2022. When will they make the minutes available? Number two, are you aware that there is a growing level of frustration amongst traders and building owners as the council has changed the process, 
that we all agreed on in good faith. So thank you very much. Thank you, Gary. I'll ask Duncan Turner, Director of City Planning, to respond to both of your questions. Uh, thank you for your question. Uh, question one, the Macedon Square Community Engagement Workshop on Tuesday the 6th of December 2022 uh, included attendance by 12 traders, eight community members, two property owners and six Manningham Council representatives. The workshop's purpose was to agree on objectives and what success looks like uh, for the Macedon Square revitalisation project. As the format of this process was a workshop, Feedback was captured by the external facilitators and summarised in a document referred to what we heard from you. This document is publicly available on Council, uh, Council's Macedon Square website, um, Manningham Your Say, and um, is also uh, an attachment to tonight's agenda, um, item 10.1. In, in reference to question two, the current process to establish a concept plan group is based on the feedback gathered from the December workshop, uh, where the group, including 12 traders, offered their suggestions for how best to consult on the preparation of a new concept plan. Uh, the process of forming a concept plan group is consistent with the commitment of having an inclusive and representative approach. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you, Duncan. Item number eight, admission of urgent business. Do I have a mover? Councillor Anna Jen. I move that council admits for consideration the following urgent business item at item 15 of this meeting. Item 15.1, public transport in Manningham. Thank you, Councillor Chen. Do I have a seconder? Councillor Thomas Lightbody. Councillor Chen, would you like to speak to the motion? No. Councillor Lightbody? I'll put that to a vote. All those in favour? It's carried unanimously. Item number nine, planning permit applications. There are no planning permit applications requiring decision of the council this evening. Item 10, city planning. 10.1, Macedon Square project update. Do I have a mover? I'd like to move an alternate motion. Councillor Lightbody. I'd like to move that Council A, note the project update. B, following extensive consultation and feedback, resolve not to proceed with the previously funded and approved Macedon Square project. C, Request officers implement a series of minor amenity and safety works as part of the council's normal asset management program. And D, request officers follow up with Macedon Square traders and other relevant stakeholders on the outcome and basis of this decision. Do I have a seconder for this alternate motion? Councillor Andrew Conlon, thank you. Councillor Lightbody, would you like to speak to the motion? Yes, thank you, Mayor. Manningham has consult consulted extensively for 18 months and received a broad ranging feedback in a process that we're confident has engaged the community and been appropriate and comprehensive. The feedback has been mixed, including some negative feedback from traders and a group of the community, and the Macedon Square project is expensive, more than $3 million. As a result, we have, we have to ensure that the spending of public money is made in the best interests of all the community and in the face of this feedback, I don't think we're in a strong position to continue with the project. However, we do recognise that works are required in the centre and this includes resurfacing the pavement to ensure that it's even and safe, building permanent bollards and upgrading the public toilet. These works can be done as part of Council's ongoing maintenance responsibilities and while I know there will be some members of the community that will be disappointed by this outcome, we will ensure that the centre is a lively and safe place to work and shop. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Lightbody. Councillor Andrew Conlon, would you like to speak to the motion? Sure. Um, yeah, thank you. Thank you, Mayor and Councillor Lightbody. Oh, this has been going on for, 
for a long, long time, a lot longer than 18 months, actually. Um, I, well, I think when this council first uh, met, it was one of the first decisions we made. Um, and I got, I got to say, at the time, I had reservations. I was probably against the, you know, personally against the open space thing. But I think as we've gone down the track, you know, the traders have been fairly vocal, or some traders have been fairly vocal about their uh, concerns about the project, about the disruption will cause, about narrowed, um, uh, sorry, uh, narrow roads as a result of um, a widening footpath, of widening the footpaths. Um, I guess it's one of those things where we've only got a certain amount of land. We've got buildings on the west side and buildings on the east side and there's a certain amount of space between them. And I think on from the first design, if I recall, there was a number of car parks lost. Um, and the, off, I've, got to, I've got to congratulate the officers for coming up with the second, um, second plan, which I thought was actually quite good in terms of traffic management, in terms of uh, addressing the car parks. I think we had net loss. We, had, we got some open space down there. Uh, I, I thought that was pretty good, but at the end of the day, it's the people who um, the people who make a living down there are the traders, and unless there's consensus there, I don't I don't support going ahead with it. You know, if the traders get themselves together and at some point come to us with a unanimous plan, then maybe we should consider it. But I think in the meantime, uh, I like the idea of um, doing the. The, the works that should have been done probably about three years ago um, while we were in the process of, I mean, that, that's what triggered, in fact, those, those works that we're proposing to now, the minor works are the, are the stuff that triggered the bigger thinking, which I think is a good thing to do. But um, I, I think we're at the end of the, uh, everyone's at the end of the tether now, and there's no need for more co public consultation. Clearly, we're never gonna get consensus. There's no perfect solution, and I think we should, um, yeah, go back to going doing those minor works as, as specified in the uh, alternate motion. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Conlon. Do I have any speakers against? Ask a question. Yes, Councillor Main. Um, could the CEO advise uh, how much Council has spent so far on all the various consultations and designs for the Madison Square project over the years? Thank you for the question, um, Councillor. Um, most of the design work has been done internally. Um, the work that we've done to date um, in relation to the plans, etc., and the rescoping of that design in terms of the consultation process, I understand we've spent in the order of 75,000. We still have one or two invoices to come in, but that's the consultation process overall, if you like, externals. Um, and we've obviously supported that with council resources as well. So I'd like to speak against this alternative motion. Um, so councillors, obviously the officers were recommending that we continue with the three and a half million dollar um, concept, but without an agreed concept plan, because we were going to appoint uh, 30 community members, up to 20 traders and 10 residents to do a co-design process to come back with a revised major upgrade um, before the end of the year. Obviously this alternative motion uh, terminates that and is a, a very different outcome because we're basically terminating the whole project. Um, I don't support that personally. We haven't done that with it with any notice. Um, I'd like to foreshadow that if this motion is defeated, I will be putting up an alternative motion, which I think could be colloquially known as the the pause motion as opposed to the terminate motion. And the key point in in the pause motion is point C quote, resolves to pause the design procurement and budgeting process for the proposed multi-million dollar Masson Square safety and amenity upgrade until council is satisfied that the Macedon Square Traders Association is properly constituted with regular association governance protocols such as minutes, annual meetings, a membership register, appropriate delegations and authorisations for office bearers and the annual election of office bearers. In other words, the traders themselves, and there's many of them, need to get their governance sorted out. Who is their spokesman? How are they elected? Who is the treasurer? Who is the secretary? Who's on the committee? Who's the deputy president? Because the way it's going at the moment, it's just too much hard work and everyone's exhausted. Uh, it's got a one man band leader and everyone's just fed up. I've been getting threatening texts. Uh, it's just toxic. And so I'm, I'm sympathetic to the council of view that we need to go in a different direction. 
but I really do feel a bit sorry for the quiet traders who do support doing a major project here, suddenly having the rug pulled without notice tonight. So I know we can bring it back. Any councillor can move a motion. It's not, you know, you can, you can, you can unterminate what you terminate. But I personally would support, be, be more comfortable with a pause motion to give all the traders an opportunity to sort out their governance, sort out their representation, and come back with a professionally developed position that we can then deal with rather than the chaotic campaigning, accusations of corruption and lying, and all the crazy Duracell bunny stuff that we've put up with for the last two years. Thank you, Councillor Stephen Main. Do I have any speakers for the motion? Councillor Laura Main. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I'm in support of taking this project off the table because I don't see any other path forward. We've engaged in community consultation and this is the outcome of that, I suppose. Um, following this decision, though, I do want to encourage traders, community members or any other stakeholders who would have been in support of this project happening to please formally write to Council and inform us of your support. Um, at the moment, Council has primarily been hearing voices against the project and has been hearing limited voices in support. Um, and I'd like to assure the community that we can take this project off the table just as easily as we can put it back on if that turns out to be what the community actually wants. Um, but if this motion does pass, I am looking forward to the minor improvements that are to come soon in the future. That's all. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Any other speakers against? Any other speakers for? Councillor Carly Lang. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, I just wanted to um, say in response to the um, community feedback and all of the feedback, sometimes being conflicting, sometimes not, the customer feedback, and um, some of the traders' responses. I just read a few that I wanted to highlight. And one of the comments that I received recently was, Macedon Square, it has everything you need locally with fresh produce, great prices, supermarkets, terrific dentists and parking. The next one was wonderful eatings, eateries, great produce, great gifts for kids. There's something for everybody. We know that the community loves Macedon Square we know that the traders do too, and Council want to support the community, customers and traders in making Macedon Square viable. Therefore, the safety upgrades that we do needs to keep our customers, traders and community safe as it visits Macedon Square. And in the future, if there is to be anything more happen, we welcome the community's feedback and initiation of that. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Do I have any other speakers? Councillor Lightbody, oh, Councillor Chen. Thank you, Chair. And uh, thank you, Mayor. <laughs> uh, I have to say it takes a lot of courage for Council not to proceed in a, a design after so many, many consultations. And I often say that the, uh, the purpose of a consultation is to, uh, for information gathering to make a decision and, import, and more, more, more importantly, just for community gather, uh, building. And during the consultation per, uh, process, I have seen division and all those different opinions divide the community. And I personally have, spoke, uh, have spoken to a lot of uh, uh, people who shop there and also traders as well. They all have a common um, goals for the better of um, Macedon Square. That is make it safe, make people to, uh, easy to shop. And because we all know that Macedon Square provide uh, a lot of shops for people to choose to purchase. And most importantly is affordability. They are very affordable for most of our community uh, members. So they all ask whether they can be safe and the parking is easy and and, and the easy and the, uh, and the pavement and the public uh, toilets, all those basic core facilities, just like uh, not only Macedon Square, but also applies to all other shopping center with, uh, uh, across our management. That is why I think that to say, we, uh, to say temporary not to proceed with the design until there is a, a demand or a desire from the community, there are still core issues that council will be addressed. The capital works funding will include those core issues within Macedon Square. So there's nothing to miss out. Those core issues also included in the design 
that is part of the design. So we just try to address the core issues and give people that, what they want. And that is the main purpose of not to proceed with the current design. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Any other speakers? Councillor Lightbody, would you like yes. to sum up? Yep. I'm sorry, you're not allowed to um, join the debate according to our government's rules. Yep, I think there's been lots of discussion from our councillors and I'd just like to sum it up a little bit. Um, and I think everyone's highlighting the importance of Macedon Square to our community, um, both to our local com economy and to individual residents whose local shopping centre that is. And also highlight that it does remain an important activity centre and a priority in our vibrant villages strategy. And what we're doing tonight is simply ending this process um, and, um, to address what some councillors are concerned about. This doesn't prohibit future processes from, from beginning, if, if that's the way the community goes and that's the way time, time goes. <laughs> um, but what this will mean tonight is that footpaths are made safe, permanent bollards will be installed for safety, and an upgraded public toilet will be made available. All the things that the community says are needed and are issues that a number of activity centres that we've also seen tonight across Manningham. Thank you. Thank you, Council Lightbody. I'll now put that to a vote. All those in favour? So we have Councillor Carly Lang, Councillor Michelle Kleinert, Councillor Thomas Lightbody, Councillor Anna Chen, Councillor Andrew Conlon, Councillor Laura Main, Councillor Jeff Goff and Councillor Deirdre Diamanti. All those against? Councillor Stephen Main. So that has been carried. Thank you, councillors. Item number 11, connected communities. 11.1, .1, community infrastructure plan for public exhibition. Do I have a mover? Madam Mayor, I'll move with the recommendation. Thank you, councillor Carly Lang. Do I have a seconder? Second. Thank you, councillor Goff. Councillor Lang, would you like to speak to the motion? Yes, thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, I'd just like to note that this item is what we are approving tonight, councillors, is the community infrastructure plan going out for um, public exhibition and consultation. Um, and then noting that it will come back to us after the public exhibition um, period with a final version which we can endorse at a later date in 2023. Um, the community infrastructure plan known as, or what we call the SIP, provides a 20-year vision for the infrastructure across Manningham. The SIP focus on, focuses on the meeting the community's current and future needs, ensuring that our council buildings are quality, fit for purpose, and accurately utilised. Manningham has an extensive network of community infrastructure across the municipality, including libraries, kindergartens, daycare centres, maternal and child care health centres, senior citizen halls, art galleries, neighbourhood houses and public halls. All council-owned community facilities require significant ratepayers' investment to build, maintain, upgrade and repurpose. Council buildings are special places for our communities to gather, connect, learn, create and make Manningham a resilient place and a great place to live as well as are inclusive for all ages, abilities and cultures. Councillors, what was really interesting in the report was the guiding principles. May I read those to you? To ensure that our community infrastructure responds to our community needs, maximise the functionality of our community infrastructure, make sure that our community infrastructure are part of community hubs where people can get many services in one location, have good access to our community infrastructure, where there are shared spaces and facilities, encourage partnerships so that with providers so that they meet the community's needs and can be multi-purpose facilities, welcome inclusive spaces and diversity where people have a sense of belonging, and lastly, be environmentally sustainable in any new designs, 
they are pretty impressive principles for our community infrastructure plan. The community infrastructure plan will be delivered, the capacity to be delivered will be evaluated and identified in Council's 10-year CAPEX plan, but external funding will be required, such as grants, partnerships and commu commercial opportunities. I welcome and encourage our Manningham residents, as it's stated in the report, 1,025 sorry, 125,857 people speaking 76 languages across our municipality, I encourage them to engage. Through the information sessions, through your say Manningham, and to read the, the documents to ensure they really do meet our, com our community's needs and wants. I also welcome feedback from our community about the short, medium and long-term plans proposed in the report. Short being in the next zero to six years, medium seven to 12 years, and long-term 13 years plus. Can I give an example from my ward? Wonga Park residents might be interested in exploring the opportunity of the expansion of community hubs. Warrandyte residents may be interested in the, the action of the poss possibility of establishing a site for a men's shed and Park Orchards residents might be interested in knowing that we recognise the Park Orchards neighbourhood house needs to seek a multiple source of funding for its redevelopment and may need a click and collect or a self-service library service. Therefore, councillors, I welcome this, our community infrastructure draft plan going out for public exhibition and receiving our community's feedback to ensure it really does meet our community's needs now and for in the future. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Carly Lang. Councillor Goff, would you like to speak to the motion? Thank you, Madam Mayor. I'm not going to repeat what has been said, which is a, a, an absolutely brilliant uh, paraphrase of, the, of the, the contents of that whole document. And uh, that is exactly what the, the program is about. In fact, uh, this is, uh, look, I'd, first of all, I'd like to thank the, the staff and everybody for actually coming up uh, and getting this particular document ready uh, to go out to public exhibition. Uh, it's a way in which we at Manningham so systematically st and strategically uh, look at how we fund things and what we do. And it's all, I suppose, in the end about what allocations of money we put to what and what priority and, and the actual rationale and reasons for prioritising certain things will be borne out according to this document. But it's quite a difficult document, uh, Madam Mayor, because it actually not only looks at what the infrastructure we have as public infrastructure for our community services, the existing, and whether it is working well enough, and, and we have an idea of what's required into the future. It's sort of a crystal ball as well as saying into the future, what's going to change? How's our society going to change? Is there something we're missing? What might, might it be? And that will change, I suppose, in further iterations of this document. But it sort of is, is sort of saying, well, you know, if things are changing, how, how is it going to affect and to what priority we give to it? So it is an important document uh, once put out um, and uh, comes back. And I think it's September, October, October, that it uh, comes back for um, ratifying again after it's gone out for um, public consultation which will go out next week, I should imagine. Um, the, uh, the document uh, then is a basis, and it's a policy basis and a basis giving us, it's probably got all of our buildings listed in the background documents, not in the policy section here, but there is a study and coordinating all of that. So I thank all of the staff and everybody getting that together. I do encourage the community to have a, have a look at it and give feedback. And uh, it, it is an important document into the allocation of resources into the future. Thank you, Councillor Goff. Do I have any speakers against the motion? Do I have other speakers for the motion? Councillor Laura Main. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I'd like to speak in support of this report, especially regarding its plan to improve our library facilities and, our, um, and expand our community meeting facilities, such as a youth hub, for example. Our community infrastructure is integral to creating community connection and sense of belonging for our residents. More and more, these facilities, are, such as libraries, are moving away from merely being merely where, where we provide our services and are becoming hubs where people in our community gather, feel safe and feel included in Manningham. Therefore, I stress the importance of creating great community infrastructure and I'm looking forward to the improvements of this plan details. Finally, I'd like to thank the officers for their work in this area. 
Thank you, Councillor. Any other speakers? Councillor Stephen Main. Um, obviously, I'm supportive of the plan and we're voting in favour, but I just want to make a comment. There's a tone right throughout the document about the funding sources are suggesting that it's not council's prime responsibility to deliver this, this community infrastructure plan. In fact, there's nine sources of revenue outlined. There's grant funding, repurposing of council land, development contributions, voluntary agreements, council rates, ding, other council revenue sources, PPPs, shared use agreements, and state government. Now, we weren't looking to those other eight sources to spend three and a half million on Macedon Square. It was just a regular part of our capital works budget. So I think we actually just need to be stepping up and doing stuff and not only doing things when someone else helps us pay for it. So when I first got elected to council in 2008, I was told we'd built, we hadn't built a new kinder for 20 years. And I, I think we've done MC squared, but we still haven't built another one for the last 13 years. So we've got really old, tired kinders. They're ours, we own 25 of them. We just need to get on with spending millions of dollars of ratepayers' money as part of our $55 million capital works budget and not say we only do something if the state government's going to do it. We didn't ask the traders or the landowners at Macedon to help fund the three and a half million. Core business, do the capex. So we're in a very strong position. We've got 95 million in the bank. We've had a 10 million underspend on our capital works budget for the last two years, broadly aiming to spend 55, going to spend 45. <clears throat> We've just taken three and a half million off the table at Macedon. So we have a lot of capacity with 160 million of revenue each year to really get on and rebuild our kinders, build new libraries, the less talk and more action, and not always just delaying because someone else is meant to be funding it. This is core business. We're going to put the rates up 3.5%. We should get on with actually delivering this and have less tone in here about someone else funding it. Thank you, Councillor. Other speakers? I will put that to a vote. All those in favour? And that's carried unanimously. Item 11.2, Manningham Disability Advisory Committee membership. Do I have a mover? Councillor Michelle Kleinert. That the recommendation be adopted. Thank you. And a seconder? Councillor Lightbody, thank you. Councillor Kleinert, would you like to speak to the motion? Thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, yes, this is just basically endorsing uh, some new members to the uh, Manningham Disability Advisory Committee, which is called MDAC. It's a great committee that I chair, and it was wonderful. There's, there was three um, vacancies um, for various reasons, and because each year we, we turn over also, uh, have one might leave and you get a new one. But uh, what's wonderful is we had seven applications. Uh, so this is really just endorsing uh, the three uh, that were uh, approved and, and to appoint them. And, uh, and to thank those that submitted their expression of interest, which has been really wonderful. And it's, um, it's really great for community. It's great to see names that you've never seen before. Part of our community having their first touch point into a committee, um, of which we have many that uh, many of us councillors uh, sit on. Uh, I just wanted to finish with saying that um, MDAC, like many other committees, does some great um, work. I'd like to um, publicly thank the officers that spend a lot of time to get the agenda right, to take time to, to make it what it is. Uh, it's a wonderful committee um, with some beautiful people. So wonderful that um, one of the highlights for last year was that we had the Inclusive Connection Day in celebration of um, International Day of Disability, and that was in December. I look forward to us having that every year because it was a great expo of many uh, different uh, places that hire people with a disability, that service people with a disability, and it was just great. Upstairs, the room was filled, and, and it just highlights the importance of committees like this. So it is wonderful, I, uh, and I do really highly recommend that if you're in the community and, and you're passionate about something, to stay connected. So when, when these opportunities come up, consider them because um, they are really, they do some really great work and I'm really, really proud of the work that has been done through this committee. So again, um, that the officers um, would be thanked for their very, very hard work and that we endorse uh, the three new members to come onto uh, the committee and join us. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Kleinert, well spoken. Councillor Lightbody, would you like to speak to the motion? I have nothing to add except echoing Councillor Kleinert's comments and sentiment. 
Thank you, Councillor. Do I have any speakers against the motion? Do I have other speakers for the motion? Well, I will put that to a vote. All those in favour? And that's carried unanimously. Thank you. Item number 12, City Services, 12.1 Street Tree Planting Guide. Do I have a mover? Madam Mayor, I move the recommendation be adopted. Thank you, Councillor Carly Lang. And a seconder? Thank you, Councillor Goff. Councillor Lang, would you like to speak to the motion? Yes, please. I know you love your trees. <laughs> I will say I do love trees. <laughs> and we all benefit from trees. Trees and landscaping in our streets, councillors, is crucial to creating an environment that people want to walk in. The benefits for walkers are both aesthetic and practical. While street, uh, while street trees provide a shelter, not just from the sun, but a little bit of the rain too. Councillors, did you know that the Hart Foundation have produced a summary of the benefit of urban trees? Three key points stand out. Tree planting along the curbside defines a pedestrian zone separated from traffic, providing a real and perceived safety benefit. Did you also know that trees can reduce the temperature of our services by shading the areas, giving a 10 to 25 per cent Celsius shade difference? And did you know, councillors, that trees significantly, significantly add to the value of properties? Findings have found that up to 2 to 30 per cent in increase of your property simply because it's surrounded by trees. We all benefit from trees. <laughs> Did you also know that trees, there is substantial evidence that trees m improve our physical, psychological and social interaction? Something importantly for you to note, councillors, though, that you don't need to be fully immersed into the environment to receive that benefit. Evidence has shown that you can, that you can derive so, so, so psychological benefits from simply seeing trees, especially in an urban context, even if they're viewed from simply inside your property. Therefore, we really do all need trees. Mm -hmm. Manningham Street Council Planting Guide ensures that the right sized trees in the most suitable locations are in um, and the most suitable species are being planted in our municipality. The encompassing report looks at tree species, looks at their ultimate mature size and their scale in relation to the street, the site constraints, verge widths, overhead power lines, building setbacks and vehicle clear clearances. I am pleased to report that Manningham has a commitment to increasing our tree canopy, to cool and combat the effects of climate change, improve our amenity, and to cool our streets and activity centres. The development of this guide is a review of our previous Manningham streetscape character study, which was done in 2009. The review was required because the previous study needed to update information in relation to climate change impacts, um, look at species performance indicators, root system issues, and neighbourhood changes. The 18 new streetscape precincts guide has been determined by the precinct's character with a tree species palette for each precinct. This guide not only relates to the planting of trees, but also to, so to the species. It does not look at providing a justification for removing trees. I commend the officers involved for a proactive measure of Manningham's treescapes. Can I also congratulate our officers for providing a really clear document with detailed visual concepts of residential, main and bush boulevards, as well as greenways of major roads and residential streets with councillors' plain views, longitudinal views for our community's comprehension benefits. This was actually a totally enjoyable report to read. And I loved learning about each precinct, their distinguishing characters, 
and reviewing the suggested street um, trees planting pallet. Therefore, when this comes out for public release, I encourage our Manningham community to look into the, ver into the street plant planting guide and enjoy the benefits that we all get from planting trees. Thank you, Councillor Cullilan. That was also an enjoyable presentation. Councillor Goff, would you like to speak to the motion? Mayor, but uh, look, uh, there was nothing I could have said. It's an absolute fantastic. Uh, no, better better than the one before, by the way, um, <laughs> of, of, of this particular street tree planting guy. No, the, no, the the the, the uh, city, whatever it was, the city community, community infrastructure, infrastructure plan. When, yes. Better summary, much better summary. Fantastic, actually. And but look, listen, there is one thing I just want to clarify here, because I've just got confused in that last statement that was made. It was brilliant until the last sentence. Um, uh, the, this recommendation says here that answer, the council endorse the street planning guide and authorise its release and final version as a guide to the public, not for public consultation. No, yeah. So, correct. so yeah, I think it's yeah, to be yeah, released. Yeah. So it is actually this is yeah. Well, I can see it. Yes. Yes. So because it is, it is our guide that we've we've got to this stage. And just to say that. Uh, a lot of people have been involved in the consultation with this, especially the open space strategy, streets out and open space, and it has been something that's been going on, and it's quite rightly based on this neighbourhood character studies uh, that were done in the 2000s, and that all goes back to, uh, I suppose, uh, street uh, policies that, that started in about 1999, actually, uh, on greening and, and going with our better streets and things like that. So thank you very much and I, I, I thank you to the officers again for getting this ready. It is a big document and the division up there into the areas and it does give uh, a lot of scope within each of those areas of what is to be planted as well. So thank, thank you. you Councillor Goff. Do I have any speakers against? Any other speakers for the motion? Councillor Anna Chen? I have to say that the street tree selection, especially in our urban area, is never easy. And just imagine the comprehensive review of each of Manningham's 1,820 streets, 108. I even have difficulty to, <laughs> uh, to, to speak the number correctly. Just imagine how many streets we uh, officers have taken their efforts to review and to determine the character type of trees that are most appropriate for each of the streets. And I have to say that the, the, the document, once in, uh, adopted tonight, will be released for public to view, to read, and just to get a comprehensive uh, uh, view about what is going on in the future of their particular streets. But just I, I also noticed that many people will have very little knowledge of, uh, of trees. I'm one of them. And, um, but I'm pretty sure that they will be very interested in the precinct and tree character mapping. So I will encourage our officers to develop a more comprehensive images of various trees, uh, various tree species associated with this document. So by, in the future, by a simple click of the link, and our residents will know what sort of tree species will look like on their streets. But for those residents who prefer paper documents than digital, I would like to see that there will be large prints <laughs> available at our key community facilities and with tree images available to browse. So this my wishes. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor, that's been noted. Other speakers for the motion? Councillor Laura Main. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I'd like to speak in support of this report and echo some of my fellow councillors. Um, our residents really love their trees, and it's a key reason why so many people live in Manningham and love living here. 
This report takes a sophisticated look into the feasibility and suitability of so many different kinds of trees um, and to ascertain what's best for the area. This includes factors such as safety hazards, including fallen trees, overgrown roots, um, climate endurance, whether it suits neighbourhood character, appearance, biodiversity, and so much more. But I just like to emphasise and myth bust that this doesn't mean that we're going to come in and rip up your existing trees just because it's not suitable under this report. Um, it's merely going to guide our work in the future. Though overall, I'm looking forward to Manningham ultimately having more trees and better, more suitable trees. And I'd like to thank the officers for their great work on this report. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Andrew Conlon. Thank you. Um, yeah, this has been a long time coming. I think the sequence of events is was, gee, it would be nice to have an update on this. Um, and then the officers took a couple of years to work out what trees were actually planted, which was the audit, the tree audit, which was fantastic. And that's enabled them to be really, um, I guess, deliberate about all the zones and all the pallets. And so I'd like to congratulate the officers for going to that effort of making this really accessible as a document, really easy to understand and really covering I guess they've gone to the effort of understanding what are the best species for various streets and what suits the existing streetscape. So I th just for, and given that I've got the four, I'd just like to, if there's a, it happens to be one from Currawong Ward listening, if you go to precinct J, there's Mullum West, um, that's for a, about a third of my ward, uh, but most of it is in um, precinct L. Millgate and Bellevue. So have a look at that once it comes out and uh, you get a really good appreciation of the work the officers have put in. And I echo Councillor Chen's uh, suggestion that we make it, make those trees really easy to sort of identify because whatever the uh, the names are, I can't even read them, the Latin names. So I'll, uh, I'll, I think that, yeah, to make it even more accessible for people to understand what they've got planted, that'd be great. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Conlon. Councillor Lightbody? Yep. Um, I think this plan's great. Um, it's extensive, and the work done by our officers and our tree experts is absolutely amazing, um, as well as the consultation that has happened with various people, including the open space committee that Councillor Goff mentioned and myself and Councillor Lang were sitting on. I think the activities we did and workshops in that group were really great. Um, we got to look at detail into what different trees were being planted in what um, precincts within the plan were. Um, a big issue for many councils in our region is actually the loss of tree canopy. Uh, mostly it's on private land, but this will make sure that we're doing the best we can on ours. And it will benefit in making sure that the right tree is planted in the right place to help increase our tree canopy and reduce and adapt to the effects of the urban heat island and increased temperatures associated with climate change. Um, a street with tree with canopy level trees is actually significantly cooler in temperature than those without, making it easier and more comfortable to be outside and on the street during periods of increasingly warm weather. And it's also really important to note that the work that the officers have done have actually meant that the trees that are selected are responsive to our local climate and have been chosen so that they remain healthy and viable in our current climate and changing climate for decades to come, um, which is something really important um, and affects actually a number of trees that are within our area that have been removed from um, the list of trees that would be planted in the future. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Lightbody. Any other speakers? I'll put that to a vote. All those in favour? And that is carried unanimously. Thank you, councillors. Item 13, experience and capability. There are no reports for experience and capability this evening. Item number 14, chief executive officer. 14.1, audit and risk committee chairs biannual report. Do I have a mover? Councillor Laura Main. I move that the recommendation be adopted. Thank you. Do I have a seconder? 
Councillor Stephen Main. Thank you. Councillor Laura Main, would you like to speak to the motion? Yes, thank you, Mayor. Um, as this council group is well aware of by now, we receive an audit and, risk, audit and risk by annual report that we discuss at our own briefings and then we table at our council meetings. Um, this ensures that the council group is across areas of risk in the organisation and also enables better transparency with our community. The biggest areas that were addressed in this report were unrecently viewed by the audit and risk committee were all things IT. So this was addressed in our digital transformations program, our cyber safety risk assessments, IT penetration test and more. It's pretty clear in the current day and age that this is a growing area of concern and organisations are, are increasingly are, are having a growing responsibility to not only create their own efficient IT processes, but also protect themselves against outside risks. This is evident with some of the recent attacks on larger organisations. As a result, I want to ensure our, to our community that we are doing the best to both ensure that our data we do hold is protected and they are also not holding onto excessive data that, uh, um, about our community that is not necessary for us to hold anymore. That's all. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Romain. Councillor Stephen Main, would you like to speak to the motion? Uh, thanks, Mayor. Um, so I've uh, attended my first um, meeting of the committee in March after being appointed uh, effective January 1. Uh, I did sit on the committee uh, a decade ago, and I must say I was impressed with the first meeting. I think it was well run. Uh, we've done one minor tweak going forward, which is noted in the report that we'll have as a standing item. Uh, that the committee uh, can just have a general discussion without management um, in the room. Um, the, uh, as Councillor Laura Main mentioned, the IT was a big focus at the last one. It's interesting, it's at the Latitude Financial uh, uh, Annual Report Annual Meeting tomorrow. So they got the biggest hack ever. So they'll be getting hammered at their AGM tomorrow. I'll be there. Um, and I think we all say with this issue, they're there, but for the grace of God, go I. Uh, we haven't had a major incident. Uh, I think we're impressive in the way we're managing it, but there's no gloating in this space because everyone's worried about getting done at some point. And being data light, that approach of, you know, don't hold stuff you don't need to, I think is important, plus all the two-factor ID stuff, which annoys us. We've always got to be logging in and receiving texts and stuff, but you've got to shut that back door. Um, and so the audit committee is all over it. So. The other good thing I like about the current structure of the audit committee is that um, we do have this visibility uh, where, as Councillor Laura May mentioned, twice a year the chair, Andrew Dix, uh, presents to the full council and then we have this uh, report of the minutes. So there's not, many, not that many councils who actually publish the minutes and they're quite detailed in their council meeting. A lot of councils that treat audit committee as top secret, secret reports and all this sort of stuff. Um, you know, when I was in the City of Melbourne at first, I think the audit reports weren't even accessible on the system. They were only paper. They were so secret. Um, so this is a good transparent model. Um, and I think we've got good, strong, independent members. And so first impressions is that the audit committee is in a good place. And this is a good transparent process to have it report back like this uh, with, with pretty comprehensive min minutes uh, twice a year. Great. Thank you, Councillor Stephen Main. Do I have any speakers against the motion? Any other speakers for? I will put that to a vote. All those in favour? And that's carried unanimously. Item 14.2, informal meetings of councillors. Do I have a mover? Councillor Andrew Conlon. Thank you. I'd like to move that the recommendation be adopted. Thank you. And a seconder? Councillor Carly Lang. Thank you. Councillor Andrew Conlon, would you like to speak to the motion? Councillor Lang? Uh, any speakers against the motion? Any other speakers? I'll put that to a vote. All those in favour? Carried unanimously. Thank you, councillors. Item number 15, urgent business. 15.1, public transport in Manningham. Do I have a mover? Councillor Anna Chen. I move that council rise to the Honourable Ben Car Carroll, MP Minister for Public Transport, to A, express concern about the level of public consultation associated with bus route changes in Manningham from 30th of April 2023. B, request an update on the status of the Victorian bus network reform and review of services to the eastern suburbs including when the findings of the consultation process completed in 2022 will be released. C, understand future bus route plans for the Springvale Road, Doncaster East 
and Dongvel Corridor. B. Request that all changes are subject to broad community awareness and consultation of proposed changes. Thank you, Councillor Chen. Do I have a seconder? Councillor Thomas Lightbody. Councillor Chen, would you like to speak to the urgent motion? Yes, I do. Thank you. As the only Melbourne municipality not served by a rail line and is heavily bus dependent for our public transport needs, Council welcomes the new Bulleen Park and Ride and excited to see Manningham is amongst the first areas to have our bus service reviewed. Whilst Council welcomes the opening of the new Bulleen Park and Ride, we know that there will be timetable changes to bus routes 200, 305, 309, and 905 <coughs> as buses start to use the new park and ride from 30th of April. The community has let us know that they are disappointed to find out from the North East Link and the Public Transport Victoria websites and the bus stops that bus route 309 will remove its peak hours service from Don Wales to CBD. 309 will also rely via Thompson's Road to Bulleen Park and Ride instead of High Street. The removal of peak hours service will have a huge impact to our Donvale commuters. In particular, the residents and staff of Pine Tree Retirement Village and Donvale Aged Care on Springvale Road, Donvale, and some of the high street commuters will now need to walk a bit further to take 908 instead. Mayor, many of the busiest bus routes and bus corridors in Manningham are concentrated along Doncaster Road, Doncaster Hill, and Blackburn Road. There is a lack of regular bus services in many parts of Bulleen, Donvale, Templestowe Lower, and areas east of the Mullen, Mullen Creek. As a result, 70% of Manningham residents drive their cars to work and more than 60% of households have access to two or more vehicles, compared to only 51% in Greater Melbourne. Also, Manningham is an, uh, has an aging population. 21.3% of residents aged 65 and over, compared to only 14.1% for wider Melbourne. Mayor, Council is still waiting to the outcome of the bus review from the Department of Transport. Any changes to the existing bus routes without broader consideration of the entire bus networks will have a first impact to our commuters. Our commuters will be forced to work much longer distance or to drive. It will increase barrier, uh, barriers to social participation, especially for older adults and people with mobility issues, not to mention other impacts such as traffic congestion, greenhouse emissions, and on-street parking demand, just to name a few. The purpose of this motion is to address community concerns about the level of public consultation and communication associated with any bus route changes. Manningham Council is seeking to work collaboratively with the Department of Transport to achieve a high level outcome for our local and broader community. So I seek my fellow councillor support to this motion. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Chen. Councillor Lightbody, would you like to speak to the motion? Yes, thank you. Um, these changes have only come to our attention recently, um, which is highlighted by the use of urgent business for this motion. Um, and I think that given the long, time, long lead time on the Bulleen Park and Ride, um, time available during design as well as um, construction, um, I would have liked to see what was proposed a bit earlier. Um, I would like to note that while the route changes do not remove buses entirely from the roads such as Springvale Road in Donvale and High Street in Doncaster with the 309 changes. It does cut the services on these roads. Um, and I'd like to know whether the, gov whether the government is planning on increasing the frequency of the remaining buses on these roads and 
in order to compensate for the lost services that would inevitably happen with route, these route realignments um, so that residents along these impacted routes do not, do not actually lose their bus service that they would normally normally take to these locations. Um, and I think given our upcoming bus review as well, I'd like some feedback incorporated into that on these routes as well as further information for what is planned when um, the Doncaster Park and Ride is um, redeveloped during the North East Link construction. So that will also have significant impacts on routes that currently use that location as well. So um, in hindsight, I'd like to ask that when the Doncaster Park and Ride is redone, that the bus route proposals are sort of brought to us for consultation a lot earlier um, as a councillor group so that we can have those discussions and um, see what changes are proposed there as well. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Lightbody. Do I have any speakers against the motion? Any other speakers for the motion? Councillor Stephen Main. I'd like to sincerely thank Councillor Chen for bringing this to our attention. Um, in Ruffy Ward, um, there is a real issue with a, a bus desert that will emerge under the proposed changes, um, heading north from Linwood Parade down to foot and then along foot to Williamson's. Um, if that service is withdrawn, then all the residents who live along there will not have a city service. For part of the route, they'll have a Deacon service, Deacon Burwood, the 281. Um, but along all our main routes with no trains and trams, it's very important that all our main routes have at least one service. And to create a desert like this um, is particularly disappointing. And so just respectfully to the state government, I think a briefing to us um, uh, and then some respectful engagement about uh, if we can avoid any, any major road bus deserts uh, with some tweaks to the plan changes. That would be great. The new park and ride will be fantastic, and the, the government is investing terrifically in bus services more broadly. But this is there are some gaps that have been identified. Thank Councillor Chen again, and hope the state government will be up for some consultation and some tweaks uh, to avoid any any major route bus deserts going forward. Thank you, Councillor Main. Any other speakers? I'll put that. Oh, Councillor no, Gold. Look, I just want to get up and endorse what uh, Councillor Main has just just said there because. Uh, a service is only as good as the accessibility to it and uh, the high street bus services are very important to a whole sector of the community. Uh, this, I think it goes, it goes down from Springvale Road, does it? Yeah, yeah, it goes all the way down. Then all the way along, along that road, that area that is not on Manningham Road or Thompson's Road, is bereft of service. And we need to have more service going through there. Uh, the, the loop service addresses a little bit of it, but what we need is a lot more uh, service in that little area into the future. And I, hopefully we will be looking into that. But as a result of the opening, it was a, it was a bit of shock reading that we were going to cut off services that are important that do give people access. Thank you, Councillor Goff. Any other speakers? Oh, I'll put that to a vote. All those in favour? And that's carried unanimously. And I'd also like to thank Councillor Anna Chen for raising this as urgent business. Item number 14, Councillor Reports and Question Time. Councillors, would anyone like to provide a report or raise a question? Councillor Chen. I do have a question to ask, Mayor. Uh, Mayor, you might be aware of the recent media reporting about the state government's plans to promote development in this uh, established service and reduce council's role in site-specific planning decision. I have received concerns about the potential impact on the amenity of the community as, as a result of the potential planning scheme change. Planning and delivery of development in established urban areas is complex and involves a deliberate economic, social, transport, and livability plan. It is a shared responsibility of the Commonwealth 
the state and local councils. Can officers shed some light on this issue? If the changes are made, we can be confident that councils and communities have been part of the, uh, uh, the process and to ensure the best possible outcomes for our community. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Chen. I'll ask Duncan Turner, the Director of City Planning, to respond. Uh, thank you, Councillor Chen, for your question. The MAV provided advice last, late last week following a meeting that they had with the Minister for Planning, and that meeting was prompted by the recent media, media articles uh, reporting plans to reduce Council's planning powers. Uh, the key takeaway from that meeting between the Minister and the MAV was that no decisions on the planning reform program beyond existing initiatives have been made and that local government will be part of the conversation. Uh, the government is committed to managing growth, including growth within the uh, infill areas, and the min minister is open to engaging with councils and the MAV on these issues. The MAV will keep local government updated on any further updates from the minister and continue to advocate for genuine consultation on planning reforms that, that impact on councils. Um, the state government uh, has over time uh, increased its planning role in, you know, particularly in reference to urban renewals, priority precincts, major projects and um, growth areas um, in particular. And so council should continue to develop um, its integrated planning policies in consultation with the Manningham community and key stakeholders and agencies and seek to have those policies enshrined in the Manningham planning scheme. And by doing that, this planning work will ensure that Council's planning priorities carry legitimacy and currency in future decision making, whether that's made at a state level or a local level, and will also support Council's um, advocacy efforts in that regard as well. Thank you. Thank you, Duncan. And I also thank MAV for his advocacy on this matter. Councillors, other reports or questions? Councillor Carly Lang, you just speak, Councillor Stephen Lane. Thank you. Mine's very short, Madam Mayor. I just wanted to thank all our Manningham RSLs for the work, the volunteer, the dedication that they put into all the Anzac Day services that we had within Manningham. Um, each memorial was well attended. There was a sentiment of uh, respect and appreciation for all those that have served our country and all those that do serve our country. Both men and women and animals were recognised and each service had its distinguishable differences as well as its united presence that everybody in Manningham was respectful and appreciative of all those that really come together for peace and unity in our country. Thank you, Councillor. And we want to thank our RSLs for all they do. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Stephen Main. Uh, yes, yeah, so I want to talk about Doncaster. Uh, commiserations to Doncaster Football Club for getting cleaned up by East Doncaster in an intra-Manningham rival in the A-grade EFL on Saturday. Uh, Manningham has three teams in the A-grade, Park Orchards, Doncaster and East Doncaster. Whenever they play each other, it's the big grudge match. Most of the players, players are paid. It's a very high standard. And East Doncaster are almost looking like flag favourites with the form they've shown so far this year. Further to Doncaster, I wish to dispel the uh, perception that Doncaster is just Westfield and a, a, a few residential towers. So within Doncaster, you have the head office of Hanson Technology, a public company at 2 Frederick Street with a market capitalisation of $930 million. You also have the head office of John's Ling at number one Williamson's Road, uh, Australia's biggest disaster recovery firm with a market value today of $1.73 billion. You also have the head office of Tire Power, Australia's biggest mutual independent tyre re retailer and the biggest independent tyre retailer in New Zealand as well. And you also have the head office of Ames, which is a US-owned company and conglomerate with brands like Hills, Cyclone, Nilex, and they're also at 856 Doncaster Road. Throw in the recently built Mercure, and you have a thriving corporate head office centre on Doncaster Hill. So never again do we want to hear people say that there's not enough diversity 
you've just got Westfield and a few residential towers. Now, Westfield's great. Current value, $2.2 billion. A billion dollars of sales last year. 416 retailers, 15 million visits last year. It is still the most dramatic thing on Doncaster Hill. It's the biggest and most valuable of Westfield's seven centres in Victoria. But remember these other corporate brands that choose to locate in Doncaster because of what it offers, of the views, the amenities, the accessibility, um, where people want to live, where executives want to live, uh, and we are a thriving and growing corporate centre in Doncaster. Thank you and well said. As a girl that grew up in Doncaster and my parents still live there, Councillor Main. Do I have other reports? Councillor Michelle Kleinert. Oh, congratulations goes out to Templestowe Bowles, who won the Merrill Shield for the first time in 31 years. So they celebrate 70 years uh, this year, uh, which we've just worked out earlier, uh, Madam Mayor, that um, most of the, the football clubs and cricket clubs in the area are over 100 years. So it meant that they started like over 100 years ago. Yeah, then, then when they <laughs> retired, they went, what do we do now? We can't play football. We can't hit a cricket bat. Let's do bowls. Hence, um, many of our bowls clubs are probably in that same sort of age bracket. Um, wonderful to have it hosted at Donvale Bowls, the Merrill Shield. Uh, every year, a different club. And we have lots of bowls clubs. Uh, they host and they come together. And I will confess finally that when I first became mayor and I heard about the mayoral shield, I was so excited because I thought that meant that I played bowls against other mayors to get the mayoral shield. <laughs> yes, it didn't happen that way. <laughs> It was a thoroughly enjoyable day, and I think it's um, pretty lucky for them that the mayor doesn't play bowls. <laughs> Thank you, Councillor Kleinert. Well, a mayor with no hand-eye coordination, which is me. Um, any other reports, councillors? So I too, in my report, would just like to acknowledge all of the men and women that have fought in many years over the last century and more. Um, and pay my respects to them and to their families and to their descendants. And I was at a service when um, one of the pastors said, we are the beneficiaries of those who fought. And I thought they were such true words. We are the beneficiaries, we're free, we're not oppressed, and we should never take this beautiful country of ours for granted. So I wanna thank them all and I would also like to thank the three RSLs for the beautiful services that they all put on. Thank you, councillors. I would now like to move to item number 17, confidential reports. Do I have a mover? Councillor Conlon. Yes, thank you, Mayor. I'd like to move that the council, the council close this meeting to the public pursuant to sections 66.1 and 66.2a of the Local Government Act 2020 to consider the following item. Item 17.1, age care reform. Do I have a seconder? Second. Thank you, Councillor Carly Lang. Um, all those in favour? That's carried unanimously. So we will now be closing the meeting to members of the public and end the live stream to consider this confidential report. Thank you for joining us this evening. <laughs>